My people, let's talk about the fishing mechanics so that we can learn the best strategy to catch every fish in Stardew Valley. There are over 60 fish in this game and each one has its own specific circumstances for when it can be caught. Even though it seems like a lot of information, having a better understanding of the fishing mechanic itself will enable you to catch over two thirds of the fish in this game. And from there, it's just a few dedicated days of searching. Your fishing level starts off between zero and 10, but can be increased further using food boost or with enchantment at the forge. The maple bar, chowder, trout soup, and shrimp cocktail Cocktail, each give you a plus one fishing level boost, escargot and fish tacos give you plus two, dish of the sea, fish stew, and lobster bisque give you plus three, and finally the sea foam pudding gives you plus four. Making any of these dishes yourself with keys seasoning will increase their fishing boost by one additional level, making it possible for a total boost of five fishing levels from food. If you're at the forge and you enchant your fishing rod with the master enchantment, you'll also benefit from an additional plus one fishing level boost, making the highest possible level 16. Fishing level is important for a few reasons, like how far you're able to cast. At level zero, you can cast three tiles to the north or south and four tiles to the east or west. These distances increase by one tile at levels one, four, eight, and 15. As far as I know, casting level 15 is only useful for obtaining the Iridium Krobus statue. So why does casting distance matter? Well, the actual cast itself doesn't matter directly, but where you end up in the water does. Each water tile falls under a fishing zone of zero, one, two, three, or five. The further you are from walkable surfaces, the better your zone and therefore you'll have a smaller chance of catching trash, you'll get larger and higher quality fish, you'll have an increased chance of hooking rare fish, and you'll get different treasure items. So while it may not always make sense to cast as far as you can, like in a thin river, it pretty much always makes sense to aim for the best zone that you can. Having a higher fishing level also increases the bar size within the fishing minigame, meaning you'll have an easier time progressing. The bar size increases with each fishing level, so having boosts will always help. The training rod always gives you a bar size equivalent to level 5 even after you've reached a higher fishing level, but other rods don't have any effect on the bar size. The only difference between using different rods is their ability to use bait and tackles. Fishing level will also help you by decreasing the maximum amount of time that can elapse before you hook a fish, and it will lower the energy per cast by 0.1 for every fishing level. Speaking of hooking fish, fishing in bubbles like this will multiply your bite rate by 4, as well as it will increase your fishing zone by 1. However, this fishing zone increase only applies to the types of fish that you can catch, but not the quality or size. But besides your fishing zone and slightly your fishing level, fish quality can be further increased by getting a perfect catch. A perfect catch improves the quality by one grade, provided it was at least silver to start with. The type of fish that you catch is determined by the season, the weather, the body of water you are fishing in, and the time of day. Knowing this, as well as everything else we've talked about, you'll likely catch most fish in the game unintentionally, as long as you make an effort to mix up the way you're fishing. I don't think I would be providing much value if I covered exactly where and how to get each of the common fish that most of you have caught a hundred of already, so I'll flash their details on the screen from the wiki right here, and you can pause and look for yourself if there's a specific one you need. Also for crab pots, just like put some in fresh water and some in salt water and you'll get them all pretty quickly. You should use the bamboo pole until you're level two, then upgrade to the fiberglass rod if you plan on using bait. Bait reduces the initial delay that you have before getting a nibble, so it's not a game changer, but it will help you speed up the process. From level six and on, you can use the iridium rod, which allows you to use tackles. The only tackles I consider worth knowing about are the treasure hunter, which increases your chance of finding treasure by 33%, the curiosity lore, which increases your chance to find rare fish like the legendaries, and most importantly, importantly, the trap bobber, which makes you lose progress on your fish 66% slower. For fish that are particularly tough, you should consider using foods that will boost your fishing level and or the trap bobber as it will greatly increase your chance of success. Let's go over some of the fish that you might miss if you're not careful. The puffer fish and the octopus can be tough to catch because of their tight window of opportunity, so I would recommend setting some sunny days aside to go fish on the beach. For the octopus, go from 6 a.m. to 1 p.m. and then try to hook the puffer fish from 12 to 4. Both of these guys are also available on Ginger Island, but make sure you remember that the octopus only resides on the west side. Also, the octopus is no joke. Its difficulty is comparable to the legendary fish, so you should really consider using a good bobber and a fishing boost. On levels of the mines with water, you can actually catch some fish in this area to the right. The stonefish is on floor 20, as is the ghost fish. The ghost fish is also on floor 60 with the ice pip, and the lava eel is all the way on floor 100. The lava eel is another tricky one that you might consider using boost to catch. These fish are available at all times during any season, but if you didn't think to fish on these floors, you may have missed them. The sandfish and the scorpion carp can only be caught in the desert from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. The scorpion carp actually requires level 4 fishing to catch as well, and it's not the easiest, so maybe bring a boost. Unless you're on the forest farm, the wood skip can only be found in the secret woods, but it is available at any time. The void salmon can only be found in the witch's swamp, and the slime jack is only in the mutant bug layer. 
There's three fish that you can only catch while on the submarine ride at the night market, and they are the Midnight Squid, Spookfish, and Blobfish. Since there's only a three day window to get them, you should definitely remember to make your way down there while you can. There's also three Ginger Island fish that are new to 1.5. The lionfish can be found when fishing in the ocean, the blue discus comes from ponds and rivers, and the stingray is only found inside the Pirate's Cove. These guys are found year round though, so you shouldn't have any problem getting them. And of course, there are the legendary fish. You can only catch them once per save file on your own, but you can obtain multiple of them if you're playing on multiplayer. You'll know you've got one on the hook when you see this little hat symbol. In order of easiest to hardest, the mutant carp is found year round in the sewers, the angler is located off of the small wooden bridge north of Joja Mart, and the crimson fish is by the east pier of the beach. There's the glacier fish off of this point in Cinder Snap Forest, and finally the legend is here in the mountain lake. And as a reward for those of you that made it this far in the video and didn't know this, you can angle your casts by walking in the direction that you want it to curve. This can be used to get to difficult to reach places. Thank you guys so much for watching, I hope this was helpful for you. If you made it all the way to the end of the video, I love you. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.